My name's Andrew DFT, and this is my. <laughs> the fuck. G'day everyone, welcome to another video by myself, Andrew DFT. And of course, by the title below, you can tell that this video, yes, this video, is about the Mass Effect Andromeda Predator Pistol tutorial. Part one, I need to say that, part one, yeah. So to show you right off the bat, this is what you should be achieving by the end of these two part tutorials. A very simple, but effective EVA foam blaster. Now this is done with a few additional layers and it is using only one foam sheet. So, well not even a full foam sheet. So there shouldn't be a huge demand for material cost. It just comes down to some basic layering and some techniques to get that final 3D form. Now of course, remember this is a very basic tutorial so that if you are above or more advanced with some skills, you can definitely take this a far step further, add some customization, add additional features, LEDs if you wish, it's really up to you and what you want to achieve. But I thought I'd get a quick tutorial out on something Mass Effect because of course Andromeda is creeping up fast and I know a lot of you want to get weaponized with your costumes to go and attend the launch event. So this is me helping, yeah. So if you'd like to go ahead and build this, you can of course follow this tutorial and grab the templates via the link in the description box below. They're free, ready to go, and of course work. So that's always a good thing. It helps that they uh, actually work. And to rate the tutorial, I'll give it a 4 out of 10. It's actually a very simple build. It uses exactly the same uh, techniques that we've used in more advanced uh, projects in the past through my tutorials. So nothing you guys aren't familiar with and can handle pretty well. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Alright, so to kick things off, go ahead and print out the templates. Of course, you can download those via the PDF in the document attached in the description. Then what you can do is you can cut out these little barrels and the uh, tip sight. Once you've got that, you can take the main core of the paper and actually translate it onto the foam, being sure to flip it so we have a left and a right side. Now what you can do is we can start working on the barrel sections. What we'll do is we'll break apart the template and transfer where all these individual sections should be. And make sure you do that on both the sides so that way they should line up symmetrically. Once they line up symmetrically, you can simply cut them out of the foam, leaving the three sections here. And what we'll go do is we'll make a 3D appearance by grabbing the internal section and we'll actually add a depth line and cut this piece in half. Once we've cut it in half, we can actually glue it back into position, making sure it has this kind of beveled effect. So that way it gives a nice 3D appearance and gives us that nice depth that the actual design has. Now we're going to follow the same principle and the same steps with the other section that of course we have to uh, apply onto the foam, then cut out and add a depth line, slice that in half and then place it back to position. So that way we have two segments that look like they're beveled in or raised in. I guess excavated in, but it's done neatly. Then what you can do is use your art or barge cement or hot glue, whatever you prefer is in the adhesive, and glue these sections together. You'll notice some uh, edging that is of course not seamed well, so what you can do is just mark those out and go ahead with a craft blade, a nice sharp one, and cut those out as necessary. Now jumping back to the barrel, we'll go ahead and actually add in some details. So we'll cut out these three rectangles out of the paper design and we'll transfer those onto the actual foam piece. Now of course that'll leave the nice imprints there. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do the bottom section as well, being sure to lay those into position. We will score these later, but for now we can just leave them in slot and jump back to the paper template and transfer over some more detail. Of course we have these obscure looking circle rectangle pieces, <laughs> very iconic designs. You can have two options here. If you don't have a Dremel, what you can do is the process I'm going through and just simply drawing them out and we'll score them as detail later. But if you do have a Dremel, I recommend uh, drawing these out and then actually carving into the foam as it will give you a far better 3D appearance. But that's only if you have a Dremel, otherwise just continue following the video as I am showing you. But all we're doing is literally laying all these pieces on. There should be three of them. Well, technically one on the top and one on the bottom, but be sure to flip it over so you're doing the other side simultaneously. Now we're going to go ahead and add a little tiny section to the bottom. We're first going to cut it out of the template and we'll use the negative spacing of the larger one to mark out where it should go. Once you've got it marked out with the two lines, being sure to do it on the other side, you can simply cut that away and we'll leave that uh, for now. Just put it aside somewhere safe and we'll come back to it later once we've done more detail. But for now what we'll do is we'll jump in and do the handle section. So we'll cut that off from the main template and then we'll cut out the perimeter line which of course is the bevel edge. So what we can do is then lay out the uh, internal part straight onto the foam. It should have this nice thickness around it. Once you've got that line there, you can add in a depth line, which of course, now that we have the edge and the depth, we can uh, start beveling. So of course, take a very sharp craft blade, sharp is the keyword, and go ahead and take off those edges, being sure to match, uh, match sorry, the two lines together, so that way you get a nice even beveled edge all the way around, being sure to flip it and do the other side. Now we're going to do the exact same with the main 
front trigger guard area. And of course what we can do is take off the perimeter line, transfer the main bulk of the pattern onto it, giving us the nice perimeter edge, and then go ahead and add that depth line about halfway through the foam. Once those have of course been laid out, go ahead with that sharp laid, remember the keyword was sharp, <laughs> and go ahead and cut out those pieces. It should go pretty smoothly, there's a few edges you have to kind of wrap around, but nothing too difficult, and uh, you should be able to accomplish that without any issue. Now what we're going to do is break apart the template even further. So we'll grab this front section here, we'll actually lay it onto the piece and it will give us this nice outline which of course dictates this section here. That's uh, nothing we're going to worry about too much now, we're going to score that later on. So we'll continue to break apart the template. We have this uh, longer rectangle piece that sits on this weird 60 degree angle, so you can uh, cut that piece out as well and lay it into position. It should sit somewhere in the middle between the lines we've done and the beveled edge corner. Then what we do is we've got another little horizontal looking line sitting above, breaking apart the detail. So we'll go ahead and lay that in as well, just simply drawing it into position. Next up, we've got the main section. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make this all out of an additional piece. So we can go ahead, transfer the template onto the foam, cut out two new sections, being sort of flip it to get a left and a right. What we'll do first is we'll start to bevel off some edges to give it a bit more of a 3D appearance. So we'll grab the top part here, cut off that perimeter edge, and then transfer it onto the foam. Of course, then we'll add a depth line about uh, maybe um, halfway through the foam. We won't go too much further. Halfway through the foam and simply just cut that off. Being sure to be as clean as possible with this one as it's a core piece of detail. You want it to look as clean and uh, well sliced as possible. Then we'll continue down and start adding all the other additional beveled edges slash 3D appearances that we need. We'll go ahead and transfer this section in here with these very strange lines. You're going to have to really focus on this. And what we'll do is we'll manually go ahead and add these uh, bevel lines. So what we're going to be doing here is cutting into the foam about halfway through it and then coming back in on a 45 degree angle and excavating out these sides. They should just be able to pop right out and then peel away and then you're going to have to go back in and do it on the other side. It's a lot easier to do it this way than if we were to cut two individual sections and try to glue them together. I already tried that and it didn't work out as well. So this is a much easier way. You're just gonna have to be sure you have a brand new blade and it is 100% sharp. Anything less than you're gonna have some poor edging going on, which ideally you don't want. Then what we're gonna do is just finish it off with some beveling on the lower side. So of course you can manually draw those pieces in following the perimeter line, add the depth line, and then we can go ahead and start beveling off both of these sections. It should wrap around and carry for most of the uh, southern part of this piece. So getting those nice and clean is imperative, but it's pretty easy to go through as we don't have any internal segments that we're just doing. We're just pretty much copying what we've been doing before and getting a nice piece created. Now this is where the fun begins. We've got all the detail to add to these pieces. So what we'll do is we'll cut off the top right part of this template first and we'll lay it in and work left to right, oh, right to left, sorry. We'll add in that 90 degree line, put it in place, covering it over the beveled edges that we've done, and we'll slowly start to break apart this template and transfer all the uh, unnecessary detail lines in that we need. So of course, once you've got it laid it out, you can simply just draw them in, whether that's manually or using the template as a negative space. Then what you can do is first jump in and do these kind of arched lines that continue with the perimeter. You can lay those in and transfer the section in as needed. And what you can do is you can just recycle the uh, template, move it up a bit, and just add in that extra. What we'll then do is we'll add in all these uh, vertical lines that kind of break apart the compartments <laughs> within this template to kind of give it a bit of sections. So all we're doing is adding in those 90 degree lines where needed using the uh, template as a negative spacing. And that should give us some nice uh, little pieces of detail that will come out really nice when we score it and heat it up later. And of course, that allows for some more personalization if you wish to paint it that way. What we can then do just to finish it off is cut out the uh, circle, diagonal circle pieces out of the template and simply use the negative spacing to transfer those on in place. And then go ahead using the adhesive of your choice and simply glue those into position. Now remember that piece we put aside before, well, all you need to do is add a depth line, make it a bit thinner, glue it back to position and slot it in where it used to be. So that's it, part one, done and dusted. Now of course all that's left to do is go ahead and add some additional detail to really flesh this thing out and a few extra layers to give it a bit more of a 3D appearance. But for the most part you should be able to visualize where we're going with it and if those of you who want to take it a step further should be able to kind of figure out now where you want to apply additional features, how you want to custom paint it. I just went with a very nice blue because I'm kind of in a blue theme at the moment. Um, I like blue. Um, but you can of course do whatever you wish. Stick to the basic default vanilla colors or go a bit uh, more into the intrepid zone and do some custom designs. 
But with that said, if you enjoyed the video, click the like button. It lets me know you enjoyed the content and what I do here. If you're new, maybe subscribe if you haven't already. We've got some cool content on the way. And, well, let's go ahead and click that part too. But, thank you for watching, and of course, until the next time, catch you later.